today we are going to talk about a very very important and an interesting topic of diabetes now normally when we talk about diabetes in children we always talk about type 1 as a primary focus but today what we're going to do is that we'll discuss about six cases who presented like type 1 diabetes were managed with insulin at one point or the other but ultimately they had something interesting in them as to some of them might we are able to switch over to a particular oral medication in some cases we were able to look at more complications other issues so this is the importance of how we go beyond type 1 diabetes and this is what we're going to discuss about today we have got six interesting cases which will be covered uh, sequentially covering the entire range of non type 1 pediatric and adolescent uh, picture in that regards how do you classify diabetes onset less than 6 months you think of neonatal do imaging and then genetic studies if the imaging is not clear you want to know whether pancreas is formed or not what is a better test uh, navin in this setting which test will give you pancreatic information so we can do a stool test or we can do so fecal elastase is the best marker because even on ct sometimes pancreas is not very clearly visible now if the onset is after 6 months of age whether there is a decayed presentation yes and the child is needing insulin this is type 1 don't worry so decayed onset insulin requirement don't do any work up if you do not need insulin now it may be honeymoon phase for some time but maybe one year two years still not requirement then you do a gad antibody if the antibody is positive this is type 1 if it is negative go for modi on the other hand if there is no dk and there is no obesity now this is a confusing picture this can be modi or it can be lada because it may evolve over time so don't leave it do a gad antibody if the antibody is positive this is lada if it is negative go for a genetic study in that perspective and if there is obesity no ketosis child is stable this is most likely a type 2 diabetes so this is how you classify so don't do investigations in everybody you just classify like that we'll take the case again the first case 16 year old polyuria what we found here was that he actually presented with dk but the problem was that because he was obese we thought that this could be non type 1 diabetes and stopped and the problem happened that he presented with dk later on so if we just go by our algorithm that we have discussed we say that this child has hyperglycemia age is 1 to 18 he presented with dka he does not require insulin you should have got a gad antibody done and that could have prevented you from developing this dka second case the same 18 year old girl with increased urine output and in this case was labeled as type 1 diabetes even though there was no dka and was a lean individual gad was negative and turned out to be a, a, a modi sort of a form so if you look here again you have to look at in somebody who doesn't have a dk and who is non obese the key parameter there is to look at gad antibody if it is negative go for a modi testing which becomes important in that setting 16 year old boy with obesity there is hyperglycemia hba1c is 8.3 ketone is 0.8 bmi 32 acanthosis present what do you think here uh sign it's most likely type 2 sir because acanthosis so this is already obesity without dk so again more than one year obese no dk this is most likely type 2 diabetes in that setting now because the hba1c is not very high you can start on metformin alone in this setting and finally you have got this 18 year old girl with obesity similar picture but hba1c is 10 mild ketosis so what will you do here Is the patient uh, osmotic, 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 having osmotic ketones are present so, will require insulin so better to start insulin maybe basal insulin rather than a proper basal bolus for type 1 so this is how the algorithm will tell you 1 to 18 years dk is not there per se but there is ketosis child is obese you have to consider that maybe basal insulin will be required in this setting so this is way you can classify so essentially what you are looking at is three things the age one year 1 to 18 years second is with regards to dk yes no obesity yes no just three things and most of the things come out from there and then you have to do two things uh, gad antibody and genetic study that's it so this is how we we have put our algorithm from there i'll be discussing about this 9 uh, year old female who had presented to us now she presented with a history of frequent urination and more so in the night there was bedwetting frequency which was 
occurring over the past three years. However, it had not caused much complications, but this was the main complaint. And there was no history of any drastic loss of weight or any increased uh, intake of water or any other complications per se. So when we asked her, I'm going directly to the family, family history because this, when we checked this girl, she had high glucose levels. But when asking the father, he then realized that his wife and all three sisters had had this high level of sugar at around 140, 145. They had not really done anything about it. They thought it was normal and they had not really put it into any aspects thinking they would be connected. But this was an important thing which we looked into. So next, when he examined the girl, uh, interestingly, her height was minus 1.54, her weight was one, minus 1.75 SDS and the BMI was towards the lowest side of minus 1.32 SDS. And uh, SMR, she had just entered puberty with just breast staging 2. Now, investigating her, we saw that the fasting blood sugar was 118. post pendle was were not very high at 131 and the HbA1c was 6.4. First of all, how would you interpret this result? Is it diabetes? So the results, of course, it's not diabetes. The fasting comes in the pre-diabetes. I would not, it's it, not in the pre-diabetes. post prandial is also just slightly higher. And sir, as you had explained it, the gap between the fasting and the PP is not very high. And of course, HbA1c is just not crossing into the diabetic range, coming into the pre-diabetes range. How reliable is HbA1c in children and adolescents for diagnosing diabetes? It is less like less reliable than in adults. So this is a very vigilant family who has come to us even before diabetes has happened. So it, we won't label it as diabetes, mm -hmm. but yes, why would somebody who is pre-pubertal, just peripubertal, non-obese individual have even a fasting HB uh, sugars of 118 was a big question which was always there. And there was a, then obviously a family history, three generations, mm -hmm. the grandmother, three of the sisters in the mother and the child. So all of them. So we started thinking of something else. Yes, now, what could be the inheritance? Grandmother involved, three sisters involved, and then this child. So do you think it is mitochondrial? Uh, no, because the sons are not, I mean, we don't know about the sons, but there were no sons. Yeah. But yeah, so I would consider more of an AD than a, any other. Okay. Carry forward. Uh, so when we got the further investigation, we saw the C peptide levels were normal at 4.25 and GAD antibodies were negative. So, so what do you think from this result? Is type 1 out? So type 1... We know that uh, GAD antibody is 70% sensitive to type 1. So we per se, it is, and C-peptide is also normal. So more or less it is out. So everything is going against so, type 1. Uh, when we talk about the classification based on autoimmunity and beta cell function, this is autoimmune negative, beta cell positive. Yes. This is what you think. Yes. So, yeah. So as Sir is mentioning, uh, we have antibody negative and we also have a good beta cell reserve, which brings us to the dilemma, is it type 2 or MODI? So now, taking from our uh, presentation, what her sir explained earlier, we have a girl who's just entered puberty. I would rather call her in the pubertal, pre-pubertal age group. She's not obese, which is going completely against type 2. Uh, ketotic, she was not ketotic. She was not sick at all. Severity was mild. C-peptide was good. So again, in the, uh, in the fight between type 2 and MODI, I would rather, we, would, we went for a MODI rather than type 2 because there was no other symptoms, no acanthosis and no, and strong family history of just having that mild hyperglycemia. So as expected, the NGS came uh, positive for GCK defect. And this is actually what we were expecting. So a slight discussion about what is this GCK, as sir is very well explained, it is a glucose sensor. In very simple terms, what we sense as normal uh, what we sense is abnormal, these individuals sense as normal. So if 90 to 130 is normal for us, a 140 to 145 is normal for them. And that's when they start releasing insulin. So elevation of insulin release threshold, the fasting blood sugar is elevated by around 90 to 130 mg per dl. And there's only slight increase in 2 hours because when that threshold is passed, insulin release starts. So actually, per se, then there is no difference. And the HbA1c rarely goes above 8. And... Uh, so this is discovered during routine investigation and very importantly, pregnant women who just undergo routine uh, screening, then uh, it is found there. An interesting fact about it is that the birth weight of these individuals depend on both fetal and maternal mutations. So if only the mother has the mutation and the fetus is normal, the fetal will consider the high sugar levels as abnormal. And then that way, that child will ultimately become LGA. But if both of them have the mutation, this is normal for both and they will have a normal birth weight. And finally, uh, Huh. So it is mild and non-progressive and complications are very rare with these individuals. So yes. today she had come with a HbA1c of 7. Seven. What will you do? I will do nothing because she doesn't require anything. We can monitor for the complication, but it is rarely seen as per the literature. 
So I think this is an interesting case and highlighting when not to do anything. Yeah, thanks. Sir, uh, can have after glucose, uh, up to three. Up to three. He's written that now. No. So the increase is delta three millimoles per liter. A slight increase. What is the slight increase? Up to two to three millimoles. That is uh, 36 to 50. 36. So it is definitely below 50 always okay. in terms of giving glucose challenge. So if you have somebody who has a mild diabetes, mainly fasting diabetes, which is not increasing after that, start thinking of this other possibility.